Welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and now we're going to do Section 7, the Wittig Reaction. It's spelt Wittig, W-I-T-T-I-G, but it's pronounced Wittig, as if it was a V. Okay? Now, these are the six parts that we're going to do, and I have to say, this is a pretty straightforward topic, but there are uh, concepts to learn. But there is a little bit of a, a caveat when you first start learning about it. It might seem like it's a lot more than it actually really is. It's just that the mechanism, um, chemists tend, or people tend to like to teach this mechanism because it looks complicated, but it's really not hard. Okay? So just bear with me and you'll see what I mean. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is preparing what's known as an illid. Okay? Now, all these weird names, Wittig and illid. Now, let me just tell you what an illid is. In our case, in particular, we're looking to make a phosphorus attached to a carbon. Now, the, the phosphorus can have things on it, like R three times, okay? Um, so it might look like this, for example. Now, for this reason, the phosphorus is positive, because phosphorus, if you think of the group, it's right underneath carbon, right? Uh, sorry, nitrogen. Nitrogen valence number is five. And this right now only owns four electrons. Remember, every single bond, it owns only one electron. So there's only four electrons that it owns. So that's why it's a plus one, right? Five minus four is one, plus one. So that's that right there. And now on the carbon side, we're going to have a carbon that has an R group. And now here's the thing. It, this, this carbon here can have either H or um, another R. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but I'm going to give you a general idea. This carbon, at some point, is going to be negative. Now, this is the key. This right here is known as an illid, Y-L-I-D-E. Now, again, it looks weird, Y-L-I-I-D, but it's, spell, it's pronounced ill-id, I-L-L-id, I-D, illid, okay? So, it's an illid. And one of the things about an illid, as with any atom that has positive, negative next door, that has resonance capability, we should show the resonance form. So we can draw it where the carbon actually is double bonded to the phosphorus. Now remember, P is on the third row on the periodic table, so it can have more than eight electrons around it. So we can have something that looks like this. Okay? So this is the same thing. These are equal to each other. It's just that now the carbon and the phosphorus are neutral. Now, an illid is, by definition, two atoms that are covalently bonded. I'll write this down. Two atoms that are covalently bonded and are opposite charges and also have complete octets. That's an illid. That's, the, that's what an illid means. So it doesn't have to be a carbon-phosphorus bond. It could be a carbon to a nitrogen that's an, a popular illid. So if you have, for example, a nitrogen that has a carbon and nitrogen is positive and carbon is negative, that's a popular illid. Okay. So an illid is simply two atoms covalently bonded they, that one's positive, the other's negative, but they both have an octet filled. They both have eight electrons. And that's what we see up here. Okay? All right. So now, just this is basically what we're trying to prepare. We're trying to prepare the illid. Now that you know what that means, I can write that there. Preparation of the illid. And then we're going to learn how to use the illid in a reaction. Okay? So let's talk about its preparation. Now, the way that you prepare an illid is through an SN2 reaction. So what we want to do is we want to have a phosphorus. And now this is the most generic version of an illid. It's called a triphenyl phosphate or a phosphorus group or phosphine, triphenyl phosphine. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the triphenyl phosphine and because it has a lone pair, it's going to react with some sort of R halogen, alkyl bromide, for example. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this come in and attack the R. The BR is going to leave. This is the SN2 step. So now we have PH3P connected to an R. 
At this point, the phosphorus is positive, but the carbon R is not negative. So that's the first step. Now, before I go to the last step, it, and actually, let me just show you. Um, basically, you use a base, so some sort of base that's going to be strong enough to deprotonate the R to pull off an H from the carbon that holds phosphorus. And so this is there's many types of bases that you can use here, um, but a very common one is just an alkyl group, like an alkyl lithium. So you might say, uh, you might see B-U-L-I. Now, really, any base, any strong base will do. I'm using B-U-L-I because that's the most popular for this reaction type. And remember, all this is, remember how we talked about back in when we discussed the, uh, the, the carbon nucleophiles, we said that an alkyl lithium and a grignard, they're very, very powerful bases. So the carbon that's touching the phosphorus that's positive is going to be acidic more so than any other carbon type, like, you know, without a phosphorus positive, because that positive phosphorus is making it more acidic. So this R is likely to lose an H and become negative, whatever the R is. And so now we have our illid. See that? So now we made our illid. Now again, I'm going to put life to this in a few ways. First off, I want to define what R is, but this is the general flow. And I want to point out what any strong base means, okay? So R, number one, because this is SN2, if you remember, this is a back attack. It's a concerted reaction. It was all about the steric issues. So this could be methyl which is better than primary, better than secondary. Never vinyl, meaning never a double bond carbon. Never tertiary, meaning a carbon that's tertiary. It has three other carbons touching it. Okay? This can never happen. And methyl and allyl are about the same. Remember, allyl is good too. I'm not going to put allyl in here, but we do know. I'll, actually, I, I might as well put it in. So allyl also works here. Allyl. Which is around equal to methyl. It's actually probably um, methyl is probably better. It's probably equal to primary, but I'll leave it there. It's fine. It's okay because it's somewhere between methyl and primary. You know, depending on 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 the allyl. If it's a low degree allyl, then it's the same as methyl. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, now I just want to remind you that that this is the allyl position, the carbon next to a double bond. If it had a Br, that would be the allyl bromide right and then this or that those right there are the vinyl positions those are the carbons that are on a double bond and they could never work there so that's the first thing to note so this R group right here right there is probably best to be a low degree methyl and we'll see how to use that soon the second thing is like I said the base type so what is any base any base means things like LDA NaH, Na, NH2, or RLI. These are the most common bases that you should look out for. If they write that over this arrow, then that means that we're using a base. That's what that really means there. Okay, so don't get too confused about that particular part. So sometimes they'll write phenyl lithium, like a benzene with the lithium on it. And, and so it just realize they're all the same. They're all just bases. Um, now there's one that's really... A uh, fancy that comes up one time, and I'm going to show. So I might as well put it here. It's um, it's it's called K, H, uh, M D S. So it's potassium hexamethyl disilamide, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's a silicon with a bunch of methyls, a nitrogen, and then another silicon with a bunch of methyls. This is that the group here. So it's a hexamethyl. That's where the H, uh, HM comes in. And now this nitrogen's negative. So it's going to be countering by a lithium or potassium, actually. In this case, potassium, because I wrote K. But it could be LIHMDS as well. Okay, this is right here a very unique type of base. It's really just like LDA. See, LDA is a nitrogen that has two isopropyl groups and it's negative and then lithium hangs out next to it so in this look how similar this is similar to that right except instead of isopropyl now we got this silicon these trimethyl silo uh, silo groups it's just bigger and bulkier that's it but they do the same thing they're basic they're very powerful bases 
Okay, so by having one of those groups, all we're doing is getting rid of an H on the R. That's it. We're making it.